Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, great. Um, I was thinking my mic was not audible enough. Right. So, um, thank you all for joining today's session. Um, today's session is quite will be quite interesting. And just as you, you are well aware, um, we have tried as much as we can to merge or fuse, I mean, our uh, regular sessions with, uh, which includes our facilitators with those who are our fellows, who are going to be joining us to share um, their, their uh, thoughts with us regarding research. And this uh, particular session is going to be considering research and business policy. And um, just as we have the input and the output of everything, of course, when you begin a research, which is the input, we require that it, it, it yields or, or you get some kind of outcome from it with the policy bit of it. And this session, we're going to be having um, an interesting session from our fellows, right? And these are Diana Chichu, who is a researcher and an investment and financial analyst. And we have Clifton as well, who would also um, be helping us in that regard. We have Clifton Ankara, who is also a financial analyst and policy advocate. So I think that for the needs assessment that we, we allowed or we told you to, uh, to do, or to feeling. Uh, we had some of the participants say that they expect that by the end of this research training, they would be able to, I mean, uh, apply uh, their research into areas that would help policy, uh, policy making. And so this is supposed to be a number of, uh, this will include a number of um, series of events that would, would help us be able to achieve that. And so we have these abled um, researchers who would be helping us to know what the rigors with regards to research um, and policy uh, is and what we can make out of them. Um, so I'll then like to invite Diana and left to begin with this. I don't know if um, you may want to share so just share Your, your your thoughts about research and then policy and all that. I mean, with regards to what you do in the in the policy space. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. I'm pretty sure that uh, you can hear me. But Steve, your mic keeps breaking up, so we really can't hear you. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> Is it clear now? Yes, it is. Great. Good. So I, I would need to track it a little bit. Hello, Steve. I mean, Steven. we have Diana Chu. Is it okay now? Yes, yes. Is it okay? Can anyone hear me?
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now hear you. Okay, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, um, so we'd like to begin with today's session, and we had invited uh, Diana Chichiwu and Clifton Ankara, who are researchers and are into the policy space, um, who would be helping us share ideas with us regarding research and the bridge between that and policy. Um, these two individuals have been in the area of research and policy advocacy um, for some time now, and um, would like for them to share with us their journey, to share with us what uh, would, would be required when you're talking about research and then policy. I believe that for most of our discussion we've had since we began this training, um, there have been, um, our facilitators have made us un un understand that you may, in, in your research, is supposed to contribute to, to policy making, contributes to uh, new developments in the area that you are looking at. So of course, um, you don't just do any research and then that is all, it's placed on the shelf and it does nothing. Uh, so just as we have um, that in mind, Clifton and Dinah would be helping us share their experiences when it comes to research and then the policy advocacy. So I'd like for uh, our fellows to, um, tell us about the journey with regards to research and policy making. I mean, what it is, what are we supposed to look at when we are done with research? Are we to just look at having our names, I mean, out there without our research doing nothing really, making any impact really? What are we to look at? So, Diana, if you have any, would any of you want to share some slides for us to look at or just uh, want to tell us briefly? Um, what do you have for us? Yeah, so Diana, please, you, um, you can... Yeah, hello. We cannot hear any of you. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. So um, I was asking if, if you have any, if you'd want to share slides with us. Um, about what they entails. I mean, or you may just want to share with us what you know. Hello, I hope you can hear me. Yes, them, ha, yes. I'm having problems with my network. Yes, aha. Uh -huh. So, so, um, you may, Cliff, can you also hear me? Cliff, can you hear me? Yes. Kindly, yes, okay. I can. Uh -huh. I, I can, I can hear you. Great, great. Yes, I, can I, I believe you. that you, you. Uh, you, you've got what I said, that whether you may have any um, slides to share with us. Do you, do you have any? No, not um, slides. It's just um, some experiences and then Great. some lead points on what um, our fellow researchers can look out for when um, they are embarking on topics within the, um, within the, the sector, the Great. financial sector. So, yes. so I'd like for you to begin with this. Um, um, your, how your journey has been, your experiences has been um, within this field. You are a finance person, and so of course, I, I, I do believe that your, your areas of expertise or experiences um, will be tilted towards that. 
um, but you, you may want to give us some general picture of how we should also consider some of these things. So you may begin, Claire. Okay, so um, thank you very much. Um, I'm Cliff, like uh, I was introduced. Um, I've done some, some looks into the general perspective of the financial industry, um, specifically banking sector, um, where research influences policy can be both at institutional, uh, institutional management level and then can even climb higher to standards at the regulatory level, and then even laws, um, depending on how severe they are and the, 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 how wide the coverage is. So <clears throat> we can look at, um, so when, when we come down to research at institutional level, most institutions have research departments, but you would not have them going by the name R&D or research and development, or you have that at the bigger, bigger organizations. You're looking at um, point um, names for departments like in, in CBG, you would find research and then business intelligence. Um, in First Atlantic, you see something like strategy and execution. They are all in that line of picking up information and then um, using it to influence policy. Coming from outside, if you intend to do some looks or some research into, into it, you're looking at stakeholders within, again, the financial sector, specifically banking. You're looking at the banks, you're looking at customers, you're looking at um, regulators, and then a longstanding um, uh, area which has been pertaining to banks is security which is, is almost underlining in every um, policy that is, is taken out there, convenience and their security. Cause we are dealing with people's monies and it's necessary to safeguard their monies. So um, like I said, you would find these um, departments in various institutions. Now, industry specific research leads to several, several things. For instance, um, in a, an institution, you could be looking at research specifically driven to bring out um, products for product development. You could be looking at um, research to, to give the institution competitive advantage in terms of fees and commissions. So you're looking at picking up um, feedback from customers, um, specifically designed questionnaires, specifically designed interviews to bring out um, what customers expect to meet customer expectations. You are looking at penetration um, research. If you want to, the, the institution intends to cite a branch or an agency somewhere. You're looking at how, you're looking at traffic within the area. You're looking at patronage. You're looking at the numbers. So you would find certain, um, for example, you find certain banks in certain areas and you would, no matter how much you influence them to move into certain areas, they will never go because they are looking at um, traffic. They are looking at the numbers in the area and then patronage, how, how much of business they are going to get. They're looking at research going into, um, normally the regulator, which is BOG, comes out with um, guides and then, um, guidelines actually, it goes into the heart of policies at the institution or within the institution where you would have to, every, every product developed in every institution goes to BOG for clearance and it has to fall within their guidelines. So you want to take a look at customer expectation on the ground. You want to take a how well it falls within guidelines from BOG. You have um, information gathered around this area to make sure you don't fall um, short of um, what is expected of you from the regulator side? Um, with you know what, um, Cliff, yes. so I'd like for you to um, hold on a bit so I could allow Diana to speak, introduce okay. herself, and then uh, okay. let her speak so that she can. She has some other engagements so okay. she can. Them. Right. Thank you very much, Diana. Please. 
um, you can you can begin. Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay, great. All right. Um. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity to speak today. And um, I think uh, Clifton has done a very, very good job by starting off with how research and policy works in the commercial banking space. But um, I would take you a little into how it works when it comes to investment banking. So mind you, uh, we might both have titles banking, but then <laughs> there are a lot of differences in our activities. So when it comes to investment banking, uh, investment banking tries to look at two things, capital raising and then uh, measures and acquisition. Now, mind you, there are certain divisions in the bank that also look at investment banking activities too. So in a way, banks and then investment banking firms are connected. Now, when it comes to the investment banking landscape, we have, very importantly, we have research, we have sales and trade, we have restructuring, we have capital raising, as I earlier mentioned, and we have the measures and acquisition. Now, research forms a very crucial part of investment banking. I mean, it's fair for me to say that uh, investment banking is driven by research. Why? Because when you come to an investment banking, a typical investment banking firm, when it comes to research, we look at two things. Um, the equity research, and then we have the credit research. Now, the equity research is trying to study a business and its environment um, so that you'll be able to make a buy or a sell decision about investing in the shares. And when it comes to the credit research bit of it, it looks like, it looks at, sorry, it looks at how um, you study a business and its environment in order to determine its credit capacity. And where with this credit research we also involves like sovereign debt. Now, uh, I'm sure majority of you are quite familiar with um, certain names like uh, Citibank and then there's also JP Morgan. So with these top top firms, um, they all have, they do a lot of the equity research, but when it comes to the credit research, it's mostly the rating agency. So you have like a rating agency like Moody's, you have a rating agency like Fitch, they concern themselves more with the credit research. One other aspect I'd like to tackle when it comes to the equity research is that uh, it, it looks at like performing valuation for companies, looking at fundamental analysis, trying to simulate revenues, forecasting and predicting. And then when it comes to the credit research, you are trying to, cause it has to do more with like, because it includes sovereign debt, you are trying to look at like a companies or a country's debt capacity. It also involves some form of modeling and forecasting. And also there's also the valuation bit of it. A very important tool that a, a researcher must have, someone who works in research unit in an investment banking firm, is the first tool I'll talk about is the working tools, which is your normal Excel word tool. I mean, these things that we've been learning, don't take it for granted because it follows you everywhere. And I believe these working tools is not just for investment banking, but then it cuts across everywhere. And then another important tool that you also need as a researcher in the investment banking space has to do with um, certain data tools like Capital IQ, Bloomberg. So uh, in my office, we have a TV where we are always like watching uh, Bloomberg 24 seven, cause we need to keep abreast with the um, happenings in the market. And then these are some of the things we usually work with a lot cause of what we do. And another tool you also need like in this space is the analytical tool. So um, a lot of the, reporting it has to do more with analyzing so you have your raw data but um, you need to make meaning out of the data and as researchers i know um, the very first session of this whole research training has looked 
into what research does, what research is not, and then uh, it has, uh, at the end of the day, why do you conduct a research? It's because number one, you want to provide solution to problems. It's because you want to arrive at a justifiable conclusion. You want to, it's, it's an inquiry that at the end, you, try, you are trying to explain a particular phenomenon or you are trying to gain new knowledge. So for us, these analytical tools are very crucial. Now, uh, when I moved into the investment banking space, I noticed that uh, there were certain key skills that I needed. I had been doing research for some time, but um, well, as um, Clifton had earlier mentioned, for every industry, there are some particular skills that like, are preferred or are very essential, even though some come cut across like a lot of the industries. So as a researcher who works in an in investment banking firm, a very crucial skill you need is the writing skill, which I believe a lot of us here have. If not, we probably wouldn't have uh, ventured into research in the first place. So it's a very crucial skill. And then the next one is your financial modeling skills. Why? Because I told you earlier that a, a very one of the core activities of an investment banking firm is capital raising. Now, this capital raising involves you trying to generate money, so raise funds for businesses. You are raising funds for organizations. You are talking about a lot of money. And uh, for us as investment bankers, we act as middlemen and we engage investors and we raise money for uh, businesses. Now, in other, some of the things that uh, we need, we have documentations that we need to present. And as part of those documentations, for many of you who have a little background in finance, we try to simulate or project the revenues of the business. And to be able to do this, you need financial modeling skills. So it's a very core skill needed in this space. And uh, another important skill to as a researcher in the investment banking firm is your accounting skills. And um, it doesn't mean that if you didn't learn accounting in SHS or university, you can't do it. You can learn on the job. Many of these skills you might know and then get into the field and improve on it. But for some of them, too, you may have zero idea. But once you get into the field, because you know it's an essential skill, it's something you need to build on it. And the next skill I also talk about is valuation skill. So, I mean, as you know already, the word value, anything that has to do with value means you are trying to determine the worth of something. So for us, some of the activities that we do, for instance, if we are trying to engage in M&E and &E, measure and acquisition, one key thing we do is valuation. If we are on the buy side of the deal, we try to do, evaluation to understand, okay, so this company that our client wants to acquire, what is the value, what is the worth of it? We also try to do due diligence alongside. And if you are also on the sell side of the deal, um, of course, our acquirers too would also want to know the value of the company that we are trying to sell to them. So valuation skills is a very key skill that a researcher in an investment banking space needs. Now, another skill that, I mean, people overlook is presentation skills. In fact, I think my presentation skills is being tested at the moment. It's, it's a very core skill that you need, not just um, putting documents together, but presentation matters as much as the documentation because um, I may have um, like very good valid points written down on paper, but then if I'm not able to like express it in terms of like in my speech, how would I convince a buyer if I'm on the, uh, like depending on what transaction I'm doing, how will I be able to conv convince, let's say an investor to release funds to a particular company? Their presentation skills matters. And also um, now, People barely have time to read a lot of like voluminous things. So if you are able to get a very good, if you're able to upgrade your presentation skills, even after preparing the documentation, by what you say, you're able to convince these investors to buy into what you are saying. 
And then um, another skill that you also need as a researcher in the investment banking space is your market uh, analysis. So we don't just make like assumptions. Sometimes, like I told you earlier, we go searching for raw data from, from uh, various, like from Bloomberg and the likes. It's because we, we need to let make meanings out of these data. We need to relate whatever we say to the happenings in the market. For instance, uh, on Monday like this, you heard that, uh, many of you heard that the Bank of Ghana has increased the NPR right now is at 27%. So for us as researchers in the investment banking space, what does this translate? It translates, it means a lot. It means that the reference rate will increase, the, the rate at which uh, debtors will now, or borrowers will now have to pay more for the loans they are acquiring. So all these like information, we need to present it. So it's a very crucial thing a uh, sorry crucial skill that like an investment banking researcher <laughs> needs now uh, if you find yourself in an investment banking firm and you engage more in research there are other roles that you can take up for instance you can take up a financial analyst role you can take up an equity research analyst you can be a market analyst you can be a data analyst you can be evaluation analyst and um, these things that i'm saying when you go to in africa investment banking is not like as dominant even though it's picking up it's not as dominant as it is like in the west in the west i had an opportunity to uh, talk to an investment banker who works like with jp morgan and she was telling me that over there it's like a very big deal investment bankers or um most of the of of the their makeup they have like very strong research units in fact for some of the rules you the least qualification you probably need is like a phd or something because um such like like for instance an equity like research analyst those rules are for top top like they are very top rules and uh, to an extent like People with PhDs are the ones that take up those rules because you are advising on a transaction, like in the kind of transactions that the Goldman Sachs and the JP Morgans deal with, they are huge, like sums of money. So you really need someone who is learned, someone who is very deep, like in the research field, to be able to make such good, like analysis. And then um, so like, I mean, by now you should be smiling knowing that you've not chosen a wrong field. Like you've chosen a very like crucial field. In fact, the last time I was watching the news and I realized that um, AstraZeneca, the amount of money that they, they dedicate towards R&D research and development is a huge like amount of money. It was, I think it was around like in billions of almost above two billion dollars or so so um, research is like very crucial and i think once we have the opportunity and we find ourselves in this field let's make the maximum use of it and another thing i, I want to add is that for like researchers in investment banking fields they they are really like generally the industry pays a lot even though it's like you you have to put in a lot but then the industry pays off for the time that you commit into it now when it comes to i'll, I'll just speak briefly on the policy side before i hand it over to Clifton. when it comes to policy for such a delicate like field like this, uh, we look at it more in terms of thought leadership. So in our, like where I work at like this, we try to, uh, some of the things pertaining our industry, we try to bring like uh, meanings to some of the things you, we, we thought leadership as well, it, it has to do more about like being a leader in the field. So, knowing very well that um, we are not like investment banking doesn't, is not like very common in this space. We try to like come up with researches, reports, um, 
briefs that shows uh, our leadership in that space. And so in terms of the policy bit or the top leadership, bit, that's uh, what I would have to say. So um, I'll hand it back to uh, Stephen. Then if right. Any All right. Thank you very much, um, Diana, for, for sharing with us your experience and your field, what goes on when it comes to research. Of course, I, I understand that um, you have really dwelt on the hands on, I mean, application of uh, research that goes on in investment banking field, which is, I think, is appreciate. we are all appreciative of that. Um, we also, would also want to note, I think that Cliff, Cliff was making that point that, um, and that you, in your final remarks, you were also like kind of uh, highlighting on that, that, you know, when, when there's a policy change or let's say the government um, breaks up, brings up a new policy um, that it, it, it wants to run, or let's say the political policy that the central bank issues and all that, the, the, the um, financial sector or the field in which you, in which you are, um, would have to do research to find out how it will impact your business, right? So it, it requires that there's, there's need for research. Otherwise, you may just do anything that, I mean, follow, follow the, 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 the current, wherever it leads, and that may be disastrous. And so it tells us that, of course, research is very, very important. And it doesn't only have to be that, okay, I'm just um, to myself, I'm writing my own research paper, and that is all. But I mean, businesses also use same research to um, influence the, the direction in which they want to take, given a particular policy or uh, maybe economic environment in which they find themselves. So thank you very much, Nina, uh, for that insightful uh, and comments that you made and remark that you made. Thank you very much. And I also do believe that there are some of us who are not business people, are not in the business field. Some of us are in the sciences. But I would entreat that we kind of find linkages to what has been spoken of. I think Diana made mention of um, the fact that some of the skills that she she will, she will, she will recommend to, to us is to have some presentation skills. Of course, as a researcher, it is one of the things that you need. You can't just say that you're a writing person, but you're not a speaking person. You should be able to speak out, of course, when you have the opportunity, especially during conference presentations. You need to be able to um, carry out your ideas that you've placed in your paper. I mean, briefly, to um, I mean, uh, experts who now have to you know uh, look through what you have you attend them and see whether there are any issues with them or not. So it's very, very important. Presentation skills are very important for any researcher to have. Thank you very much, Diana. So I'll now move on to Cliff for Cliff to continue from where. He started, I mean, he, he ended. Thank you very much, yeah, so Stephen. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think Diana put um, the, the whole conversation into good uh, context and perspective um, where she addressed the investment banking side of research. And I'm looking more at the commercial side of um, banking or uh, financial sector. Um, with with like Dinah said, with their side, they, they, they concentrate more on investment. But when it comes to um, commercial banking, it's more of sales and then um, profits. Okay, so one of the things you want to take note as, as a researcher, whether you are with an institution or without, you want to look at how it impacts the institution's baseline, how it impacts the sector's baseline. Um, the profits within the, the, the industry or even within the institution. A lot of people write papers, but they are not able to break the barriers of um, doors because it doesn't really bring out the, the impact on, on baseline. Are, are we going to make pro more profit from it or we are going to lose money? Because um, businesses set up as profit-making um, in, in businesses, if you're not able to properly um, bring out the impact regarding how much of an impact it is to the business regarding money um, involved or not, it may not really catch any attention. Same with um, from 
even if you are an external person writing a paper to, to, to direct policy within a sector, you may want to go down to see its impact in monetary terms on the sector. So um, that is one of the, the, the things. So in, in, in commercial banking, like I said, um, sales, we do a little bit of investments um, um, by way of treasury bills, fixed deposits, that fixed deposits happen to be the, the institution's own, own investment uh, products. We, the, there is um, treasury bills that the government um, investment vehicles, and then also bonds. You have that also within the, the commercial space. And then also deposits. Recently, um, we've been having news go around about haircuts, um, people's deposits, um, bonds, treasury bills, president coming out to say there will be no um, impact to local investors. And then there's later on some clarification that it won't um, affect treasury bills. There's clarification again that all this prompt some level of research within the industry, within the sector. If you are within, you want to take a look at your, your customers and the, how the impact of it on them. And you want to start putting together some damage control and how you're even going to communicate it to customers. Um, not too long ago, after President came out to uh, talk about the haircut, I, I think um, there was this circulation from EDC or EcoBank talking about the impact on investment um, portfolios that are held at their end. And then it triggered some are, are along the lines of investment within the, the industry. Um, to a large extent, people panicked and started taking their monies from institutions. Oh, and this, this a lot has to do with the research into it and then the impact and how to coin what you have to tell the customer in order not to create fear and panic. All this um, leads to data within the industry, picking up data and then understanding the data and passing it on to the consumer. That, so this happens to one of the things that if, I mean, as a researcher, you may want to look into um, that the haircut and then the debt restructuring and its impact on banks and then financial institutions. Another area too that um, is of very key importance to commercial banks is security. So security has been the, the driver for most products churned out by banks where they want to provide convenience, but in a secured manner. So you have um, commercial, um, sorry, uh, financial institutions coming up with um, joining technological institutions, fintechs to bring out products that can give you some convenience. However, will protect your, your funds. It's a very important area that you can look at as a researcher. We have, um, not too long ago, earlier this year, I think around March 2022, um, we had this issue of bullion funds being attacked and it's a, it prompts some level of research. I, 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 how are researchers taking a look at how trans, um, transmission of uh, funds is done within the financial industry? How secured are the funds that have been transited? The kind of um, are they coming in uh, funds that have been cleared by the regulator, and all the kind of security that is present at the branches and all. The one of the things that changed the banking space is Momo. Okay, when Momo came, there was there was a lot of um, briefs on Momo. The the fear was that it was going to take the business of banks away. But after several briefs and um, search within the industry, we realized that no, it was rather going to complement the activities of banks, whereby it was going to increase financial inclusion. People who do not have the time and chance to work to banks are going to use Momos as agents. And at the end of the day, when, when you're, you're balancing out, the funds are still sitting in the accounts of the banks and it's being secured with the banks. So all these are research points, they trigger research within, within this area, from within and even without. We also want to look at 
Um, so like I was saying, the move from physical to digital. Now the, the, the digital space is moving so fast with the with a, um, introduction of FinTech. You're looking at um, um, AI, you're looking at big data, you're looking at cryptocurrency. And it's, it's a major topic out there that has very little um, um, people lack so much understanding in it. So as a researcher, you have some, some skills. You may want to look at FinTech and its impact on the financial industry. Is it going to take away businesses or is it going to complement it? Is it going to make institutions, financial institutions stronger or is it going to make them weaker? You're looking at cyber attacks, you're looking at, so these are all areas that prompt some level of data taking and then using it to influence policy. And then as far as even going to, depending on how strong it is, to influence law and then um, provide standards. Um, just like um, Dinah said, with the skills that you need to have, you're looking at um, how to do good projections and forecasting, which also influences baselines. If you're able to do a very good forecasting on, on, on patronage of a certain product, Within a certain time, for instance, you, you, would, you would realize that um, commercial businesses tend to roll out a lot of um, Christmas products or seasonal products. Let me put it. You hear of Easter products. You hear of Christmas products. You hear of uh, during the, the Muslim celebrations, you hear of account opening that has some, some, some benefits for the specific the time, the season within which all this is backed by data, by research especially when you have enough information, not just about your customers, but within the area that you operate. Um, I think finally, I'll share with you some, some um, experiences within, within, the, within the industry where, where research has caused significant um, shifts within the financial sector. If you would remember, uh, BOG shifted, uh, I mean, they raised the minimum banking requirements from 100 million to 400 million. Um, that's in, in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 2016. And then in 2018, there was a banking sector cleanup. All this was backed by some data within the system. So with, with the kind of information available to a regulator like BOG, thinking that um, customers should be more secured, they raised um, minimum banking requirements so that should a company, so should a bank collapse, they would be able to pay off their customers with the reserves at the BOG. They did the same for the insurance industry. Now we have, um, we have insurance companies merging with financial institutions, or well, I mean, they are all in the financial sector with banks specifically to have bank assurance products, whereby they cut across, you find insurance companies selling bank products, you find banks selling insurance products. And all this influenced the shift from 100 million to 400 million. You had the banking sector cleanup come out because um, according to research made um, done by, conducted by BOG, most banks could not, did not, were not that liquid and could not, in case or they, they, they declared bankruptcy, were not going to be able to guarantee the, the, the security of customers' funds. Now, four years down the line, there is so much that has happened within the sector. As a researcher, you could pick something like the effect of the banking sector cleanup years on. Take a look at how the banks have fed. Have they become stronger? Are they wielding? Are they, I mean, are they having more deposits now? Are people people's confidence in the banking sector re renewed? And is it causing the banks to have more business? How, how about it's um, the overflow of the effect on the financial sector? The banks happen to be the the backbone of the financial sector. How does the spillover effect on insurance? Um, media, education, all the other sectors within the, the, the economy. It's, it's, a, it's a trigger point that can prompt some look into it. 
And once it meets some solution or a demand within the sector, wherever you place your paper, it will be, it will, it will, it will raise eyebrows, it will cause people to take a look at it and attention will be given to it. Um, Stephen, I think that will be it for now. And um, if there is any question or contribution from anywhere, I'll be glad to, to attend. If, um, for that as well. And I'd like to point to a few things that, that you highlighted. Um, yeah. From all, all the things that uh, uh, fellows have said, what you do realize yeah. is that they are looking at certain research problems that are they identify uh, within within the the sector in which they find themselves, and they look at possible I mean research areas that you could you could consider, right? So just as you 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 you, would, you agree with me when we began to be looking at. So you look at problems that are within a particular sector in which you find yourself or, or that you may be read, perhaps reading from the newspaper or some, somewhere. Then you find that, okay, I mean, this is something that would be worth looking at, you see? And then you start digging into it. And that is what, I mean, Cliff, Cliff has done with the kind of examples that he has given, all right? So the extent to which your research that you're doing could influence policy is so, so, so huge, very huge. There are so many things that, um, you know, ha have occurred in, in, in the last few years that within the financial sector, if I should put that in context, that as Cliff said, uh, research is seeking to shape how things should be. Now, I think Data Kane also did a research on the CBDC, the ECD, Ghana ECD, that, that the Central Bank wants to rule out. To, to increase financial inclusion. Um, and we did the research on that and, and to look at, and it was a policy brief, to look at what the central bank should be looking at, focusing on. So it's not just about um, just considering rolling out an e-currency, e which I mean, governments or countries all over the world are doing. Are doing. So we also want to do the same. We have to look at how uh, what the central bank should be doing or looking at to rolling out the, this kind of um, currency, which would benefit us in the long run. So these are the, the things you should be looking at. So finding a research idea is difficult. However, it's also easy when you are very observant about things that are going on. And for, for, for every sector in which you may find yourself, whether you are in the sciences or maybe medicine or financial sector or anywhere, what you should notice that reading or knowing what happens within your sector is very important. You don't just, you're not just there and then it happens that, okay, I want to do a research, let me just do something. You need to know what's going on in the field in which you find yourself. You need to really know. You have to be reading to know what's happening. They will prompt you on what to do. Or what do you think that may be worthwhile for you to research? All right. Um, Dina, Dina is saying something here. She says, um, financing for SMEs still is a challenge in Africa, but people have looked at the banks for long. There are venture capital funds, impact funds, private equity firms who have capital for SMEs. You can consider research exploring on the activities, their fund sizes, Industries the the that in which uh, they can back right. You see, so these are things that we can be looking at, and and this um, session and the previous ones are helping us to individually look at research ideas we can consider because there will also be a session for us to um, talk about our research ideas. So we should also look into that. Is there any chance someone has to um, to ask our, our fellows? Or any contribution from any of our fellows who have joined um, us in in, the, in this uh, for this session. All right. So at, um, in the chat, Frederick Kufu is asking. So is it advisable to partner with a certain company, say MTN, to perform certain research? see Momo penetration and how it affects their business. 
or you just have to do your research independently and later present to such a firm. So that's what Frederick is asking. Uh, so if any of our um, fellows will be willing to, to give, a, give an answer to them. Yes, so um, both, both, both approaches work. Um, if you're looking at partnering, um, for instance, like the example you gave, um, MTN for a, a, a research people of that, that nature. Um, MTN as an institution gives, the, gives opportunity for um, stuff like that. They encourage people coming up with stuff like that due to their, their size. If you're looking at other institutions, you may consider doing an independent one that, that comes with a solution to a problem within the industry. Again, keeping your eye on the market, making sure that within standards, it influences baseline. Because industries are more pushed to profits, if you're able to connect whatever you say is happening within an industry, if it's, if it's in, the, in the interest of the institution, it could be in two, two ways. So an institution could make money by business sales, or they could also make money by staying out of trouble. When uh, in the banking sector, when you misconduct yourself, BOD charges you at your, your account domiciled at the BOG. So it's another way of not losing money. So if you come out with a research, a, a paper that borders on some happenings in the industry that an institution could, could fall victim to. It's another way of um, helping the company make money. It's a solution to a problem. If it's solution-based, then it comes to a justifiable conclusion and you take it to, as an independent paper, you take it to an institution. Any serious and credible institution would listen to you. You get me? So depending on, I mean, both approaches were depending on the kind of um, paper you are doing and then where it is the, the target, who the target is. Yeah. So, yeah. Hello, Steven. Hello. Of course, by some of these institutions. And then, hello, can you hear me now? Hello? Steven, I can hear you, please. Hello? Yes, I'm back. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, so I was pointing out, can you hear me, please? Yes, you can hear you now. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So I was making the point that, you know, there are um, conferences that are hosted by some of these institutions. And so if you have a paper that may be directed towards them, you can just present, I mean, with that particular, within that particular conference, and they may find it interesting. I mean, want to infuse your your recommendations to them on some of the um, the issues that you wanted to point out. I mean, the research that you're doing, so they may infuse some of the uh, your your recommendations in the activities, which could help them. There have been cases where these have been done, and just as uh, Diana and Cliff have said, I mean, um, you could you could be looking at some of these things as an independent researcher. And it will go a long way to, to benefiting yourself and then the institution as well. Questions, please. Um,
So any questions, any contributions? The floor is still open. I, I believe that I'm, I'm, um, you would agree with me that research and policy impact are very key. They are very, very key. You can't just do anything just like that for the sake of doing it because you want to have papers to your name. You need to be able to have that kind of linkage between your research you're doing and then the, the policy impact. All right, so Elvis, Elvis Button, kindly go ahead, unmute yourself and, and let us know what you have to say. Okay. Thank you. Um, with the question that was asked as to whether when you conduct, you want to conduct an organizational research, as to whether you should go to the organization to tell them about your intention or to do the independent research and later come to them. I think it's better you go to the organization to tell them of your intention by providing an abstract or a description of your problem and your observation and how you think can be improved to them before you go ahead with your research because research to conduct a research that will make an impact it has to be very expensive because for instance if you're conducting a market research for mtn you would have to collect a lot of data even the sampling technique you are going to apply whether it being random sampling and the tools and everything you are going to do will be very expensive if you want to conduct a research that will make impact so i think um, it's better you go to the organization present your problem or your abstract to them and how you think your problem would help them achieve the purpose or that is the bottom line approach or bottom line or profit or whatever objective they, you intend to do. You should con con contact them, tell them, discuss with them, these are the, my observations and these are the things I think if you look at would help and find out whether they are interested because if you have spent your own resource to do this, and at the end, yeah, you don't get they don't accept it or you don't get anything for it. I think it's going to be the motivation to the researcher. So to make a research, conduct a research that would make an impact for an organization in the society, I think it's better you seek the attention of the sponsors or the involved organization before you go ahead with it. Thank you. Mm, okay. All right. Thank you for that contribution. Um, yes, Cliff, Cliff. Kindly go ahead. Okay, so um, just finally, um, so just to add, you know, there is a lot of um, technological advancement, okay, in recent times, okay, at least in the past um, 10 years, there have been major, major um, disruptions to not just the financial sector or other sectors. There, there are different ways of doing uh, media coverage, there are different ways of studying now on education, um, finance, one may want to, whilst considering putting something together, um, bring on board some level of technological involvement here. Um, a lot of companies are now open getting departments to take a look at the, the shift in the system. So you may want to consider how technology re, uh, relates to whatever topic you want to address or you want to write on, you may want to take, see how technology plays a role in, in that area. And then it gives you more a firmer um, ground when, when you, you're putting it together, it makes more, more uh, you're able to get a, a more, more, gives you guarantee of, of some, some here, um, reception you would get someone to listen to you so let's let's consider that in 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 putting um stuff together the the, the role of technology in every industry at the moment yeah. okay all right i i think that frederick is asking a follow-up question i don't know if frederick frederick um has a problem with his mic but I would, I would read for him for now. The next time, Frederick, you'd have to speak for yourself. <laughs> right, so um, he says, a follow-up question. We live in a country where most people steal people's ideas and sell them as if it was theirs without giving credit. So what if I conduct my research and submit to MTN and my research idea gets stolen without reference or recognition of any sort? What am I going to do about it? Uh, 
Clear, will you get the question? <laughs> yes, I, 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 I heard it. All right. Um, All right. <laughs> I, I get you, Frederick. Um, it's in every uh, in every industry there is there is risk involved. Okay. However, if you do not take the risk, you may end up writing a paper, and it will be with you for a very long time. One of the ways by which your your research and your papers, your policy briefs, your journals and articles can can gain you some audience is by creating very good relationships within the institutions within which you want to approach. In fact, research also works along the lines of good connections because you need a lot of information, credible information, secondary or even uh, data gathered um, from open source, uh, from open sources alone may not even give you the kind of um, conclusion that you want. You may have to go at, at next level and gather some kind of credible data from places that um, may be deemed difficult for any other person coming for information or writing something about. You may want to establish very good connections within the institutions that you intend to have put there they would buy into it before you even put, I mean, you, you have to employ your, your, your human relation skills. After you are done doing your research, you need to create the connections, you need to build the relationships because there, there are a lot of other people even writing probably close to the same topic you're writing, but what makes yours more, um, gives you an edge over, over this, you know, when it comes to the fintech space, you will see two products, okay, almost doing the same thing. You go into it, you, so you see um, a product like um, a social media product like Twitter, okay, and you get various um, social media products doing similar to Twitter. But what's Twitter? What's the why is Twitter having an edge over the others? There are several chat um, apps. But WhatsApp seems to have dominated. Okay, so you would see you would you would could put together a paper that could be close to what someone has put up, or someone could take what you have and make a replica of what you have. But there's always something in there, and you know it as you put together what you have. And then now you bring in your your selling your sales skills to be able to convince people that you have you really have a solution for a problem that they are experiencing. A lot of um, institutions have things they are looking at, okay? They have issues or challenges in the sector they are looking at, sometimes on their desk, but they, they haven't concluded or made any conclusions to it. And your, I mean, approach to them may give them some, 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 um, some understanding and they could bring you on board. So in as much as the fear of holding back because your, 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 um, your work could be taken from you, I think you should rather um, the joy of being um, the solution to some challenges within a certain area and then create as much as um, connections you can within the field. And when there, there are issues, you'll be called upon to, to speak to or to write something for. Some, most financial um, analysts um, trying to demystify this current um, haircut and, and debt restructure, debt swap and all that, they started from uh, very, very uh, low tables, writing policy briefs here and there, speaking to issues that topical issues in the system. And then they are there. There is an issue and then they call on them. Hey, um, government is saying that they want to do this. What do you think about it? And then they begin to analyze, do write papers on it. And then they, it's carried everywhere as an expert opinion or um, an issue that has been looked into. Yeah. So um, I think Stephen, I'm done.
Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I think for, for for let me let me add a little bit to what you said. You know, sometimes you as a young researcher, you're looking at so what am I going to be getting from the research I'm undertaking or I'm conducting? You're looking at the the economic benefits out of it, of course. So you may want to um I mean write the paper, go to an institution and see, okay, this is what I've done, this is what I've found about your organization. And so um, if you want me to, I mean, if you want me to turn, out, turn in your, the findings I've found, then I could take something from you. I mean, that is not essentially the reason for doing the research. You know, you have first and foremost, the passion and interest to do so, and you have the commitment to find a solution to a problem. Now, you, you may not know the broad spectrum of benefits you may receive. They could be economic, uh, they could be social, there could even be some goodwill that you may find from that. But you see, you don't have your mind, I mean, uh, tilted towards that. It may be something that is in the long term, medium term, it could be short term, but you may not know. So your dedication to doing your research and, I mean, bringing out quality uh, research into the field for people to find solutions to problems that uh, we're facing within the society is, is, is what should drive you. And believe you me, you may start to receive, to to see the returns that you may, um, I mean, that will be churning out from your work, all right? So sometimes, of course, it's difficult. You have to sit hours and hours and hours, days, weeks, months, to put up, to put up something that would turn out to be something good to help um, provide solutions to a problem in the society. And then someone may take your work, look and read your work, and would not, and, and would take your solutions or recommendations and use that. I wouldn't even cite your reference to you that, okay, you are the one from whom they found this, uh, I mean, solution. But maybe in some short period of time, we find out that, no, it is what you wrote that is, I mean, helping to uh, provide this kind of solution. And that, um, you know, that even that thing that you, you've done and the fact that they've been able to use your solution could be enough for you because there could be even more benefits that may come out of it. So that's how you should be looking at it. Not necessarily, um, you know, the economic benefits that you receive there and then, but the, the good work that may come out of it, the other social benefits that will be received from just the work that you, you did. So that's a little that I, I would want to add uh, to that. Sometimes, yes, um, you, need, you know, um, businesses or institutions may contact you to do a research. That is different. Perhaps you are doing some consultancy, so you may want to. They may want to contact you, seek your services, so that you render them for those services to them. But the other times you have to do your own research. Then, boom, institutions come. They see your work. Then they want to apply what you 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 did, and so that also happens. That should be the goal, right? So, Elvis, kindly go ahead with with your question. Okay. So, what I would like to uh, share about the question that was asked was is that. Mainly, when you are conducting research, the intention is not to get the financial gains. However, when you do the work very well, it becomes very difficult for the institution that the work was conducted to, for, to implement the policies without consulting you. That is, when you, it, you add value to the work. For instance, assume you are doing impact analysis, uh, uh, impact analysis for them you have collected the data, you have analyzed the data, but it will be quite hard for them to uh, implement the recommendations without asking you for the do files and those things. And in such an instance, you tend to benefit when they are trying to implement the policies on the research. There are instances whereby you will not get anything for it, but you move on because your interest is not in the, only on the financial gains, but the recognition or the fact that what you have said or what you have found is being implemented. And that is a benefit. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Elvis. Uh, Cliff, you still have your hand up. Is it that you have something? I think it was the, no, no, no. Oh, I think okay. it's the first right. time, I, yeah. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Any more questions? Otherwise, I should believe that we, we, we are we are quite okay with the discussion so far. Any contributions, any questions?
Okay. Okay. I believe that there, there are no more questions or contributions. Right. So um, on this note, I'd like to thank all of us for uh, joining in for today's session and thank Clifton very much for availing himself for this session, sharing with us um, their insights, their journey, their experiences um, with regards to in, with regards to the, the research and, and then the, the field in which they are, that is Clifton and then um, Dinah. Um, even though she's not around, um, I believe that she uh, bred me sent our our thanks our thanks to to her um, for joining for today's session. And once again, I would like to thank all participants for joining in. Of course, this this session was quite biased because um, we didn't include any any science um, person as part of the fellows for this session. But of course, I believe that uh, research is research. Uh, whatever the policy implications may be from your research and the benefits you may receive from it, though you may be from a business field or financial sector, you as a science person could also benefit from same. So it cuts across all, all, all sectors. It's not biased, I mean, in the sense of the word. Um, so yes, um, I'd like for all participants to also know that this is supposed to help us to start thinking about our own research ideas, right? Because um, we are hoping that this session that we are holding would would help us to would help us to do our own thinking around what problems are we find in society, what we can write on, what we can research about to help us start our research journeys. I mean, so you may not know, right? So you need to look at all of these things we are doing, not just for the sake of um, getting knowledge about these things, but also trying to put your hands to work um, so that, I mean, of course, you may see the benefits later on. That, that one, I do believe so. I do believe so. So yes, we'll bring today's session to a close and hope to see you some other time um, later tomorrow. But before, before we leave, um, we would have to take a group picture for the sake of our, um, our media outreach and all that. So, Let's let's switch on our cameras and take a group photo. Then we can call it a day. Right, so wise, um, please, if, if you're taking the picture, can you let us know so that uh, when we are done, we can we can all leave the, the session? Please, I'm done. You are done? Oh, okay. All right. Right, so thank you very much, all of you, and it's a bye for, from my end. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>